Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Well, following on for Senator McKim there, he's actually really started the theme that I wanted to talk about tonight because it was only in this place last night that Green Senator Faruqi made the comment, I quote, the Greens, in the balance of power, will push the next government to move further and faster to tackle the climate crisis, to end coal and gas, to do more on mitigation and resilience and protect people in the pl and planet. Well, I don't know about everybody else, but that sounds like a pretty good done deal to me. Obviously, those opposite and those at the end of the chamber have already got into bed together. They're already lining up to destroy industries, to destroy jobs, to turn the lights off, to kill regions like the Hunter. But what else would we expect from a party who manages to put the member for Shortland from the, the very far left of the Labor Party who's busy off hugging snowmen, COP26, whilst he's trying to shut down the industry that his entire seat, his entire electorate, is based on. This is absolutely appalling and it is exactly why a Labor-Greens alliance is the most dangerous thing facing this country. And if Senator Faruqi hadn't said it last night, we've just heard it said again by Senator McKim, the balance of power with their Labor mates, already locked and loaded, going to shut down every coal mine, shut down every power station, kill off jobs. I'm off to the Hunter on Sunday and I'm very much looking forward, very much looking forward now, even more than I usually do, to catching up with those industries, to catch up with the defence industry that is absolutely striving to support our nation, to the lithium-ion batteries that are being produced up in the Hunter region. Go and see the coal miners, Newcastle ports, those industries that sustain the entire Hunter region. At some point in time, the Labor Party purported to be the party of workers. Well, we know that's gone. And as we're going to lose the member for Hunter, it's like the, the last great hope as Mr Fitzgibbon leaves the Labor Party, because at least he got it. We've lost Senator Kitching. She got it. The Otis group seems to be a bit quiet at the moment. Maybe they can't get a booking or they've stopped stocking Godfathers so Senator Farrell won't go anymore. But we do very much look forward in hopefully the next coming weeks that we hear from the Otis group that they can give some solace at some point that coal is important to Australia. Energy production and fuel is important to Australia. Gas production is important to Australia. And if you don't get that already, just go and have a look at what's happening in the Ukraine and in Europe at the moment. It is absolutely irresponsible to suggest anything otherwise. We expect that from the Greens. We know that from the Greens. But their bed buddies that are all lined up with their power sharing agreement, the Albanese Bant government, we know what's coming and we know how many jobs are going to be lost. And to say that people who are experiencing incredible hardship after COVID, that is coming out of an incredibly strong economy, bounce back better than almost anywhere else in the world, AAA credit rating, but people are still doing it tough. And we know there's cost of living pressures because we all do actually live in the real world. We actually do go in and turn our lights on and appreciate where that power comes from. But we know that Australians, real Australians, they are experiencing cost of living pressures. And a lot of that, again, a little bit of intellectual depth that we know is lacking around most of this chamber on the other side. But a lot of those cost of living pressures are actually created from international factors. We've had supply chain issues because we can't get the travel of the ships and the planes that used to bring so many goods into and out of our country. We've got the fuel issue being driven by the war in Ukraine. These are international levers. But we as a government have taken responsible action in supporting everyday Australians by putting more money into their pockets. We know that when you have a job, it's the best thing that can happen for you if you've got a job. It's good for your confidence. It's good for your self-esteem. It's great for your kids to see it. We don't want to see a consistent welfare state. We don't want to see people on a lifetime cycle of welfare. We know they want a living wage up here. We haven't heard what's coming from the other side. They backing a living wage too. Backing a living wage so that we don't have people in work. But when people are in work, we trust them. 
to keep more of their own money because we know they can spend it the way they want to spend it. They can invest in their family and spend the money they earn much more efficiently than a group, a gaggle, a pair of bed partners that want to shut down entire industries. I think we've all heard today, we know it's all happening. The Australian public deserve to know what alliance you have set up between the Labor Party and the Greens, what sort of backroom secret dodgy deals you're doing. I don't know if you've got a movie theme for that one as well. But you know, the Australian people deserve to know just how and when and how quickly, if you were to form government, you would kill off their jobs. And that's why in a couple of weeks, Mike, you know that hubris is sneaking back in. We all remember the we're ready photo. I'm really looking forward to the next one. I think it'll be a cracker. But we remember the we're ready photo and I'm sure we're going to have to have Mr Bant in that one because Mr Bant's ready as well to get into that power sharing agreement. I think you might all find in a couple of months Australians going to understand this government has taken them through COVID, has saved their jobs, has kept the economy strong. We are seeing debt being repaid at a much faster rate. And one of the reasons for that, Senator McKim, you might enjoy, is the outstanding unbelievable commodity prices at the moment. Iron ore, coal, thermal coal, we love it, gas. Those commodity prices are what is going to bring the deficit down. But because some of us actually did pay attention in economics, we understand that. And I think the Australian people are going to see it because they do not want a bunch of economic illiterates who want to cut their jobs off, who bully their colleagues and don't look into it whilst hypocritically jumping up and down absolutely appalling and the Australian people deserve to know exactly what sneaky deals you guys have done.